The biggest thing that's different is that since our technical people are integrated in with the artists, that is, they think of themselves as, as a group together, then the artists keep pushing for new things from the technical people, and they keep coming up with new ideas for the artists to use. So there's this yin-yang between the two, and it's caused a lot of progress. And the thing we wanted for this film was a new way of lighting, because uh, you want this, the feeling of reality, but it's not, a, it's not a real world. So there's a way of visually touching us, which you, which you do through lighting, and yet it's this hyper-real world. Pixar is such an important piece uh, of the larger Disney empire. Um, how, how would you describe Pixar's role within Disney? Well, the thing that we did very early on was we set it up so that Pixar was kept quite separate. Uh, and as you may know, uh, John Lasser and I go down to Disney Animation, and we run that as a completely separate group from Pixar. So that's now this healthy group, and here we've got Pixar as a healthy group, but we have our own culture here. So the way of doing things, almost at every level, is unique to this place. And so Disney's work to protect the culture that we have here. What, what, how do you define that culture? I mean, I know it's something you've always thought a lot about, um, Steve Jobs, you worked very closely with, thought a lot about it. What is it about the Pixar culture that makes this such a, you know, such a vibrant community, a really interesting place? Well, we've put in several different processes or techniques to try to get to the truth and try to get to honesty. When a lot of companies, it's, it's kind of dangerous to tell the truth. We really try to make it safe to get to the hard problems. Because when we make these movies, they're brutally hard. We ha we've had failures, we've had things that have gone off the rails. It just happens all the time. A culture means you've got a group of people who can respond to these unknown events that are going to happen. And the people here own it. They feel like they own the culture. And if there's something they don't like, they'll tell me. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, and, and I mentioned Steve Jobs. I mean, you guys knew each other for, what, more than 25 years, right? Yes. I mean, is there one thing that still sits with, with you today um, that you were left with from Steve that, you know, still feels its way through the hallways here at Pixar? Well, I, there are two big things. Uh, one of them, which is a subtle thing to describe because there's a mythology about Steve which doesn't represent actually who he is. But Steve was very focused on the problems and not on the personality around them. And by doing that, it actually made it easier for people to be honest and candid. But that's something that people find unusual when they see it, because it looks like overly frank. But when you get through that, you realize you're all working on the problem, and that's part of this cultural heritage that we've got. I know it's abstract, but it's an important part of what we do. Right. The other one was that Steve was the one who, who basically designed this building. And this building is phenomenal. It's the best building to work in that I've ever seen. We've got the central atrium, we've got the lunchroom, the theaters, the meeting rooms, the bathrooms, the mailroom, they're all at the center. So it's designed so that people cross all the time. Uh, the building is now named the, the uh, Stephen B. Jobs building. Yeah. But everybody is aware of the fact that he transformed the culture by, by setting up an environment for us to have these kind of encounters.